our understanding and our assessment of the situation, whether or not it's an official act. Yet you keep assuming within this argument that it was an official act, right? The fake elector slates that he tried to impose on uh, the governor of Georgia and on Pence, that was an official act, dummy, right? That wasn't ruled by the Supreme Court as an official act, which you claim, like, you know, has the uh, legislative magistrate to basically, uh, you know, like officiate whether or not this was an official act. Like that's just your BS. That's just your BS. If anything, it does matter whether or not it's legal because what's in contention was, and if you read anything about the news, Trump is indicted on this very issue on whether or not he tried to overturn the 2020 election, right? And it is pretty clear that he's not immune from a case that he's indicted from, dumbass. He's not immune from the case where basically he pressured a bunch of um, elected officials in certain states and said, okay, these were uh, the votes that were counted. Now try to find me like 10,000 more votes right? That's not an official act. That's just him begging for those officials to basically overturn the election in his favor. And then when the results were certified on January 6, which those attempts from Trump face planted on the ground, what did he do afterwards? He didn't do anything to stop the insurrection. In fact, he went the day later where they pressured him and he conceded the election. Beforehand, he just said, it's time for you to go home and that's it. So none of those things, none of the things they did on January 6th, none of the stuff where he like pressured like an official in some state to like overturn the election, none of that was an official act. That's your interpretation of it. And the Supreme Court hasn't uh, ruled whether or not it was an official act during his presidency. In fact, he's being re-indicted on that issue as we speak. He got indicted again. You know, the case got dismissed and now the case has been reopened by a special prosecutor. So you don't know shit about politics. And the fact that you call me a liberal, I don't know if Millith is a liberal. Guess what, Shameless? Just because someone criticizes Trump, that doesn't make them a liberal nerd. But I don't think you have the brain cells to understand that. Okay, I think we're done. It sounds like you weren't listening and you just recirculated the objection and you're uh, claiming a lot of things that are false. So let me explain that to you. You're saying that I'm, you're saying that you're assuming that it was, wasn't an official act, but you're accusing me of assuming the contrary, that it was an official act. Wrong. Wrong. You're not exposed. Hold on. Wrong, and I'll expose you. Yeah, we don't I'm want any. Assuming. Hold on. You're interrupting me. Yeah, I'm you're interrupting sorry, me. No, no, but that was for. That Hold on. Why? Stop. I, I didn't interrupt you at all. I didn't interrupt you at all. You, I, I didn't interrupt you at all. There's a Hold guy. This is, this this is pure. Noise, dumbass. Hold, dude, you need, to, you need to move him down. You need to move him down during my my time because he's, he's displayed that he can't do this. I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. Please move him down to the audience if he's going to just violate all the terms. I just. Okay, and so obviously he isn't listening. He's said something that is clearly false, and he's recirculating objection that doesn't matter. So what, what, I'm going to start from the very beginning, okay? He's asserting that it's not an official act. He's accusing me of taking the opposite position, and I'm going to expose it. I am not saying, okay? That's, and that's what's important. And then he basically said, it is, it, it, what is an important issue is whether or not it was legal. No, it wasn't. That's not an important issue. Just in case his immunity covers that. That's what's under dispute, right? Not whether it's legal. It's just whether or not the presidential immunity covers that action there, okay? And so, um, also... Uh, let me see, what else do we got here? He said that he's not immune from the case that he's being currently indicted for. Okay, look, obviously, uh, you can be indicted for something, and then if it gets if he gets charged and it gets appealed, it can be appealed to a further court of which they could say, this is an improper ruling on the basis that he had immunity. And lower courts can get that wrong. There's nothing, if you think a lower court, which oftentimes gets a lot of things wrong, that they couldn't be mistaken about that and it couldn't be appealed. So just being indicted is not evidence that it, it, he isn't uh, capable of being immune from the prosecution. It's just the process is it'll be appealed and then the higher court will say, you made a mistake because this is the type of actions that he has immunity for. Okay. And then what's interesting is I, I love how you liberals always talk about a guided White House tour as an, an insurrection. Back in the day, like John Brown, like going from plantation to plantation and attacking a South Carolina armory with weapons, with uh, an uh, insurrectionist slave group that had killed multiple people. That's what an insurrection is, okay? Not a guided White House tour where some cop had a heart attack and then y'all tried to lie and say somebody killed him. The only one that got killed was somebody basically at the window of the Capitol building that got shot by a police officer, okay? And so no one died in this resurrection. Almost no one was armed in this resurrection. No one harmed anyone. And the, they basically got a guided White House tour where they just opened up the red ropes room and walked around. Uh, the worst that, that happened was some people ran around and busted into some senator's office building. So only only a liberal propagandist would construe a guided White House tour as an armed insurrection, and only a liberal propagandist would say that Trump was inciting violence when he tweeted, everyone at the Capitol remained peaceful. This is all BS. And I don't want to, just so that we were clear, I don't want to hear Arianus ever recirculate the claim whether or not he thinks it in fact was a, was a uh, official act or not, or whether it was illegal or not. It's legality doesn't matter just in case that's covered under uh, his immunity, and whether or not uh, it actually was, he was immune from it, isn't what's under dispute. It's just whether or not the Supreme Court already put that law in place for this very purpose. I'm anticipating that they didn't put that law in place for him to have presidential immunity in a vacuum. Okay, this is a strong point that isn't being listened to. He's not making, they didn't put that immunity there in a vacuum, okay? They did it to anticipate this type of shit. So my, my thing is this, they made that uh, immunity for special reason. It's not in a vacuum, it's in response to political persecution. They are uh, conservatively leaning court that was mostly appointed by Trump or sympathetic to Trump. And ultimately, uh, they've already made uh, political overtures that they're not gonna have him persecuted, uh, prosecuted, and so, persecuted as well. And so, 
I'm predicting, not whether it's legal or illegal, not whether it was an official act or isn't, I'm, I'm completely on the fence about that. I'm, all I'm predicting is that the Supreme Court will rule it as an official act, even if it, even if it doesn't meet the legal definition. And that ultimately is going to be the law of the land. And this is like the tenth time you've tried to uh, throw shit at the wall and have it stick and persecute this guy and you failed every single time. Uh, you're frauds and propaganda. So that's all. Okay, notice how you have to go on the 10 minute filibustering rant that didn't address everything that I said and like engaged in like typical gaslighting behavior because you don't have the IQ to understand what you just said. So, first of all, like you're completely wrong, right? So, all you did was just basically speculate oh, but the Supreme Court will rule in his favor. Oh, but the Supreme Court will judge this as an official act, right? Okay, the question is not whether or not like you have your contrived like speculations on what the Supreme Court is going to do, right? The question is whether or not currently that was ruled as an official act. And so far as you would know, if you actually like looked into the news and read up on shit that doesn't have to do with Sean Hannity, uh, it's not being ruled as an official act. January 6th is not an official act. The fake electors plot is not an official act. It hasn't been ruled as that. Right now, you might speculate and predict and do all this nonsense irrelevant, right? If anything, if they do do that, that just shows that the Supreme Court just wants to, you know, allow Trump to do whatever he wants and, you know, basically just run amok with calling these things official acts when they aren't. Uh, the second part that you said was fairly interesting where you said, well, if he gets indicted, he can always appeal and he can always appeal the verdict of that indictment if it so happens to be that he's like convicted again of a crime. Okay, but yeah, okay, he's appealing to one right now. He's appealing to virtually every single case that's being presented against him. He can do that. Thank you, Shamos, right, for like using your gay ass modal language again. He can do that. That's not a testament as to whether or not those things are within the confines of being um, uh, the type of acts that are absolutely immune, right? He, the point is he's not absolutely immune from any of the stuff that he's charged with. And the Supreme Court, as of right now, hasn't ruled that any one of those things were official acts and things that he is immune from himself, right? Biden was the one where he said, we're going to overturn this ruling by the Supreme Court because it makes basically makes the president into a dictator, which is, I think, is what exactly you want Trump to be. You want him to be a dictator and to basically just get away with everything as long as if it's an official act, right? Um, that doesn't work that way, Shamos, right? So third of all, okay, you made a prediction about what the Supreme Court will do. I got news for you, buddy. Trump has a court case, a lower court case next month. If it so happens to be that he's yeah, sorry, I thought it was kicked out for a second. So if he's sentenced to jail or something within that time frame, it's very unlikely that the Supreme Court is going to like go further along with ruling that the um, other cases that he has, he's absolutely immune from, right? So, I mean, you can speculate about what they're going to do. You can say, okay, this is what the Supreme Court has in mind. This is what they're going to do. That's all completely irrelevant. As, as things stand right now, it's objectively true that none of those things have been ruled as official acts during his presidency. And so he doesn't have absolute immunity from those things. If he goes to jail or if he's sentenced, uh, you know, with a fine or something, they might even delay that ruling until the election is over. So, yeah, you can keep masturbating to Trump if you want to and keep, you know, contriving your fantasy stories to boost your conservative PR. But the simple fact is your boy, by his own lights, is not immune from any single one of those actions that he's charged with. And the Supreme Court, uh, hasn't said otherwise, right? They're actually on my side regarding this position. You're the one that's incorrect. That's an argument for silence and a fallacy. Um, okay, so let's start with, hold on, hold on, hold on, stop, stop, dude. If you gotta be pulled down to the crowd every single time, I didn't do it over you, so you're just, you're just showing that you're incapable of debating. Hold on, please, no, not, not, to, not to unmute you. Congress, what in the crap is going on, man? So, um, if you're saying that the Supreme Court hasn't ruled on it yet, then that means they're taking your side. That that doesn't follow. That's complete non sequitur. Okay, you're you're assuming that their silence is an agreement. That's an argument from silence. Okay, that's that's a fallacy. Uh, what you're saying is that I'm speculating what the Supreme Court will do. Absolutely, yes, I'm speculating what a conservative Supreme Court that's uh, uh, mostly appointed by Trump and sympathetic to Trump will do. Okay, you're saying that the real question is whether it's an official act. No, the real question is whether or not when any lower court does what they do, whether or not it will likely be appealed to the Supreme Court will have its final say, and then what they're likely to do. Okay, so all of that is irrelevant. He recirculated the claim that I told him not to circulate because it's irrelevant because he's grasping at straws and has nothing else to say, okay? And so he's saying that currently right now it hasn't been ruled as that. Yeah, currently right now it hasn't been ruled as that. Does that, does that mean that it won't be ruled on that in the future? Does that mean that that, uh, that political um, law giving him immunity wasn't put in place for this very, to, to basically um, combat this very scenario? Absolutely. And he's saying that he said this, which is very telling. That would, if they actually did give him immunity, that would prove, only prove that the Supreme Court wants to uh, let Trump do whatever the fuck he wants. That's exactly what I'm predicting. I, exactly what I'm predicting is that a mostly conservative, uh, Trump-leaning Supreme Court that was heavily appointed by him is going to let him do whatever he wants in terms of political law Fair, and he's going to give him immunity against this stuff. And he's going to get into a second, or be, be able to get into a second term. Uh, and so, 
Another thing you said is that if he went to jail, it will be unlikely that they would give him immunity from the other charges. That doesn't follow. People go to jail all the time, and then an appeals process happens, and then they get they get taken out of jail, and then they get uh, basically rewarded for being falsely imprisoned, and then it gets overturned. So uh, I don't know how in the world you think him, if he does in fact go to jail on one of the other charges, that it's unlikely that he will get immunity on the rest of the charges. I don't, I don't see how that follows at all. That just seems uh, that just seems like bullshit. Another thing I'll say is this. What you guys are promoting is extremely dangerous, right? You're, you're, you're promoting an environment that's, that's going to start a civil war. Let me explain to you why. You're trying to take someone off the ballot that like literally 50% of this nation support, okay? And so what, what you're doing is you're trying to make it so that half the actual country's uh, voice cannot be heard in terms of the democratic process, okay? We're already in the middle of a culture war and things are always uh, heating up and the civil war rhetoric, rhetoric is heating up. And you guys think the best way to handle this is to make uh, half the population of the U.S. feel as if their voice hasn't been heard and you think that's the best way politically and socially to handle this? You guys are buffoons. You guys are suicidal leftist maniac buffoons if you think that that's going to be helpful for this country. And then it's okay that 50 million people think that they, their democratic uh, vote was undermined because of some legal loophole that you guys tried to jump through and it's not going to start a massive war or, or a huge cultural situation. You guys are insane. And so, again, I'm just going to recirculate the fact that it absolutely doesn't matter whether or not their Supreme Court hasn't ruled on it. They have the final say. It doesn't matter whether he will be in jail. They have the final say on whether that will be an illegal prison, uh, false imprisonment, legal imprisonment, uh, unconstitutional, etc. And it doesn't matter or not whether or not you think it's an official act or whether it was. It's just whether or not the Supreme Court has put that in place for this very ruling. And I, I'm predicting it wasn't made in a vacuum, that they are going to do that. And they put it in the, in the legal writing for this very scenario right here. And all of you libtards are just going to be dumping tears and crying when we actually go down to a fair election. Okay? That's all. Okay, so it's funny how you like to charge me with uh, formal and informal fallacy claims when you yourself doesn't even know when the material implication is false. You yourself has failed logic tests against Sully over and over again. You're the last person in this room that is in a position to talk about logic. The second part is you keep filibustering again. Notice how I keep my responses short and you have to you know, go on an entire constitutional rant as to whether or not your boy Trump is being prosecuted. Here's a simple fact. Simple fact is um, when I said that the Supreme Court was on my side, I think you interpreted that uncharitably. But I mean, I could tell because you're shameless. The simple fact is, when I said that they were on my side, I basically said that it was objectively true that they haven't ruled on whether or not he's absolutely immune from those actions that he committed. And it's also objectively true that those things weren't official acts when you yourself assumed previously in the conversation that they were, right? So that's what I meant by them being on my side. Right. I didn't say, oh, that means that they're going to agree with Darth Arianus on Clubhouse that Trump shouldn't be held accountable for his actions. Third part is you made the claim that it, somehow this is dangerous for democracy. You know, it's dangerous for democracy trying to overturn and revert the results of an election by pressing a governor of Georgia that, you know, a state that he lost in 2020. He pressed him on. And I quote, find me this amount of ballots. Find me these amount of votes. Right. So he didn't win the election fairly. He didn't win it at all. In fact, he almost lost by a landslide. Um, what he did was try to subvert the election by putting these like fake elector slates in these jurisdictions to try to, you know, basically grab up some electors there in certain districts where he lost against Biden. Right. Um, if anything, electing a guy who literally had the intention of doing this and literally he said it himself, I'm going to terminate the Constitution. Maybe we should do that. I think that would be tremendous. Believe me. When he said these words. You're trying to say that somehow trying to keep this guy accountable and away from the White House is or, you know, for the ballots, for that matter, is dangerous in comparison to that rhetoric. I mean, you have to be insane to think that now. And the final point is you keep talking about like what they're going to do. You don't know exactly what they're going to do. And it doesn't follow that. OK, because there's um, a likelihood or a certain likelihood that he will go to jail, uh, given this, uh, you know, ruling that he has or the sentencing that he has next month, that it makes it less likely that he won't be charged on other crimes is completely absurd. Dude, he has, at this point, he has 91 charges against him. He's on 40, 34 counts, right? There's still time for the election. There's like less than, what, 80 days to go. I think we're at like near 70 days to go. If anything, they're trying to extend, the Supreme Court is trying to extend time so that they could uh, rule on whether or not those acts that he did commit during this presidency were official or not, because they're trying to see what goes on in these lower court cases, which you ignored. Um, I don't know why you think this is all dangerous, Shamos. Like, if anything, what you're basically telling me is you would rather have a toddler have the nuclear codes, right? A guy who has more thin skin than you have, that it, basically every single election that he loses is rigged. But if he wins, you know, it's the biggest landslide victory since Ronald Reagan in 1984. If you think that this is somehow not dangerous at all, or maybe even less dangerous than keeping this guy in check and, you know, seeing if he goes to jail for his actions, I think you're in for a rude awakening, buddy. I think you're in for a rude awakening because if anything, as time goes on, he's just going to continue uh, getting reindicted on the very things that you have no evidence that he was immune for, right? So you completely fail in this conversation. You keep doing this gaslighting bullshit thing. Oh, you libtards. I'm not a libtard. I'm not a liberal, right? That's Piper. Piper's a libtard. I'm not a libtard. So 
you can do the gaslighting, dude. We're not convinced, right? We're not convinced of you of being this political expert on these topics of, you know, how jurisdictions work and how the immunity process work, right? My argument is not about how legal code works, how jurisdictions work. My, my uh, argument is about what the ruling of immunity by the Supreme Court was for, that it wasn't made in a vacuum, and that I'm predicting it was to anticipate these very types of lawfare type attacks against Trump. If that's true, then I would predict that they're going to utilize that to give him immunity against these lawfare attacks. I don't have to know anything about jurisdictions to understand the motives of the Supreme Court for following that immunity. And so that's you think what I'm trying to do is make a big political argument where I deeply understand the system, deeply understand the jurisdictions, deeply understand how the courts work, deeply, deeply understand how the legal definitions work, and none of my argument is rest on that. So that's a failure for you to understand what's actually functional in this conversation. I'm appealing simply to the political climate and the, and the desires of the members of the Supreme Court and the evidence that's provided that they will likely give him immunity since they made this uh, made this law. So you're wrong there uh, as well. Let me look up at some of the other things. Um, he said that uh, this toddler, you think you think it's so dangerous to basically take half of America's democratic right away. Yes, it's extremely dangerous. But he's saying it can't be as dangerous as a toddler with the nuclear codes. Oh, what about having a guy with full-blown funky dementia and halfway dead have the nuclear codes? Okay? Which one's worse, dumbass? Because that's who's had the nuclear codes for the last four years, dumbass. And so if you think that a guy with full-on fucking dementia isn't uh, more of a risk than fucking Trump having the nuclear codes, who didn't even get us in any foreign wars, okay? Well, Biden got us in two, then you're, you're out of your fucking mind, okay? Does that to the system argument. Look, let me, let me explain to you. He said that the Supreme Court currently, as we sit, has not ruled on the issue. Therefore, that favors him. That's a non sequitur. That's an informal fallacy of argument from silence. All the other. What I'm actually saying is the ruling that they made giving him immunity constitutes evidence for one side or the other. Them being a con uh, conservative leaning court, mostly appointed by Trump, is evidence that they're going to do one lean one side or the other. Okay? The, uh, that the majority of the court is conservative and actually supports him, whether or not they were appointees of his or not, is evidence that they're going to do this. So he's wrong about that uh, as well. Let me see. I think I had one more thing. He's Come saying, on, no, you can do it. Hold on, I'm just going over my notes. You're, you're, I've never interrupted you once, and this just shows that you're completely struggling. You have and notes. so he's saying that he's saying that what Hintz was doing and what he was trying to do on the day of the election with the electoral votes was trying to uh, subvert the election. Now that's one way that you could cast it. Uh, if you're going to cast it in a charitable light, which I assume that you won't do for the course of this debate, because you have to cast everything uncharitably from your side as a, as a diehard liberal. But what, in, on his view and on the charitable side, what he was doing is he was trying to ensure that um, undemocratic processes and fake election processes weren't going on, and he was trying to. Uh, see if Pence was willing to exercise his duty as a vice president by not censoring those electoral votes, which is fully within his executive uh, power. And so given that, you think that there's election has suspicious circumstances, um, the electoral votes are suspicious, and that ultimately uh, Pence has the ability to not to censor the votes and basically uh, basically grind the process to a halt until they can actually figure out and look into it more. Um, that's him not trying to subvert an election. That's him trying to basically um, maintain the democratic relations of, of the election, which is the exact opposite as you cast it. <laughs> All right, thank you. Go ahead. Are you done? Thank you. So another rambling session of pure fantasy and nonsense. So uh, first of all, so you didn't understand exactly what I meant when I said the Supreme Court was on my side, but we can push that aside for a second. A second time. I said the Supreme Court was on my side, don't fuck. Right. So I'm going to repeat it to your dumb ass again. So you said a couple of things there. It was just a salad full of none of this is a mute you, your fucking mic. You, you, you fucking mic. You fucking Adderall addicted cokehead. Right, dude. Yeah, more, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to tell, right tell you this. I'm going to tell you this right now. So you said that, so you basically did a what about I'm calling him out for basically going meta and not answering any of the arguments, ignoring the fact that I accused him. I think you're panicking even more now because your interruptions are much more frequent. They're much more persistent. And you're like doing full meta and not answering any of my objections. In a way that's, I mean, just failing on its face. So look, so you did a what about ism about Biden. You're like, well, but you know, if you say that Trump is a toddler and that's dangerous, well, look at the last president that we've had for the last four years. He has fucking dementia, dumbass. You don't think Trump has dementia, dumbass? Trump meets the same criteria of dementia as Biden. He forgets what state he's in constantly. He constantly slurs his words. He confuses Biden's name with Obama, right? He said that he was like, uh, you know, at, at a time when he was like campaigning for the primaries, he said that he was like the Speaker of the House of Representatives. I mean, if that's if you think Biden has dementia, then Trump Biden well, having, like, less confused for Zelensky for Putin. Dementia, then Biden still Biden has dementia. Confused. So thank you. Right. Second of all, you made a claim about Pence it, establishing and maintaining the democratic relations. I want to know what democratic relations those are when basically Pence was on board with the whole uh, fake electors slot in the first place until he had a change of heart on January 6th. Right. If anything, uh, Pence and others were like questioning the election, trying to insert these fake electors. And you basically glossed over that entire objection by saying, well, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant whether or not it's legal. It's irrelevant whether or not he did that, because if anything, he's trying to maintain the democratic relations. Democratic relations, dumbass, is when we have free and fair elections, not trying to basically impose your will on the American people by trying to subvert it, by trying to find some like fake ballots in Georgia and all these other swing states that he lost to Biden, right? That's another thing that you keep glossing over. And it's completely irrelevant what your conservative grievances are to that. Right. And I see you in the main chat. You can continue coping if you want, but it's not going to work here. Third, you said something that I thought was pretty interesting, which you keep claiming that this is this is like a subversion of democracy by keeping him off the ballot. Hey, dumbass, I know that you live in some like victimhood, narcissistic little fantasy land, but he's 
in the ballot in most states, right? The fact that he's gotten this far as a convicted felon, I mean, I'm, if anything, that should be good evidence against the fact that you want to claim that there's lawfare against him, right? If anything, he's being too protected by the Supreme Court as we currently stand. And by the way, they haven't ruled that he's absolutely immune over everything. So let's see if your prediction, your little dumbass prediction is right. Second of all, he's still in, he's still on charges in uh, several of these cases where uh, yeah, you can say he can appeal to these things, but that's not what's in contention. Yeah, it's possible that he can appeal to these things, dumbass. We know. But he still has 91 felony counts. He still hasn't been ruled by any one of these courts, whether it's the Supreme Court or lower court. He hasn't been ruled absolutely immune from anything, right? That's how things stand. You can continue to imagine or like hypothetically contrive whatever scenario fits your little conservative bubble. That's fine. I could do that for liberals, but guess what? I'm not a liberal, so I'm not going to do that. And third, okay, Let's talk about Trump's charges. Why don't you bring up the fact that Trump has repeatedly called to terminate the Constitution, right? Don't you think this is like him trying to shoot himself in the mouth when he says this, when he says that he wants to terminate the Constitution? Don't you think this is a guy that his comments perfectly congrue with the fact that it was his intention to subvert the election and that even he doesn't think that he's absolutely immune from those actions? Even he doesn't think that, right? With all this bravado that he shows on social media, I'm pretty sure that he's pretty frightened given the fact that he's been reindicted over the same case, which you claim that the Supreme Court will like rule in his favor. Guess what, bud? The election is in two months. If he loses, they're going to forget about him. That's my prediction. They're not going to even bother. And he just gets thrown under the bus because if he loses, he basically loses all the political immunity and all this shenanigans that he's pulling right now. So if anything, the lawfare is coming from the other side where they're basically trying to, you know, gaslight us with, oh, but you're keeping him out of the ballot. Yeah, but guess what, dumbass? He's keeping himself out of the ballot by continuously making these dumbass claims about the last election, which happened four years ago. He's the one that tried to f like fake an elector's plot. He's the one that tried to uh, institute fake ballots. He's the one that even tried to search whether or not the Dominion machines were working properly on the night of November 6th. I mean, this is a failure on your part, right? And I don't expect you to like rebuke anything that I said successfully. So I'm just going to go out and have some tea for a little bit and see if you're a dumbass can reply to everything I said successfully. Good luck. Yeah, and so I'll just start right there. He said that Pence was actually trying to subvert the election, not trying to keep out, uh, carry through a democratic process. That's not true at all. So what, what the whole point was is that the election uh, process was extremely suspicious and that they were basically trying to basically uh, get uh, Pence to um, censor the Electoral College so that they could have time to figure it out. That isn't subverting democracy. If, in fact, there was um, election fraud, that is maintaining democracy. Okay, so in no way is calling into question an illegal election with a bunch of shady stuff subverting democracy. Okay, that, that, is, main, that is by very definition maintaining democracy. Okay, uh, one thing he said is that Trump has dementia too. This is patent dishonesty. Okay, if you want to try to construe, this shows that you're a propagandist and you're a failed propagandist. Okay, if, you, if you're trying to construe that the level of cognitive decline that Trump has is equal to what Biden has, you're a liar, you don't believe that, you're a propagandist, no one is compelled by that argument. Every, you said that he mistakes um, Biden's name for Obama. That's a simple mistake because all that Biden is is Obama 2.0. You want to know the name that uh, Biden messed up? He called, introduced uh, Zelensky as Putin. Okay. Now that is so far off the base. That isn't even close. Okay. And so if you if you want to give as evidence that Trump you know has dementia because he you know it's not evidence of dementia that you call somebody by a different name. Evidence of dementia is not remembering what you just said moments ago, pausing, uh, having trouble to recall uh, names of people that you know know in your whole life, not just uh, political op opponents. He forgot his fucking wife's name, dude. Okay. And so. There's no way that you're going to sit here and try to represent that Trump has the same level of cognitive decline as Biden. Basically, his whole party threw him under the bus after the failed debate because of his cognitive decline. And they also were throwing him under the bus because he couldn't even walk up Air Force One. It was like the, the emperors had no clothes moment. And they thought that they were going to be able to pull a heist on the entire American public. And once they realized the heist was impossible, they realized that they could rally up uh, all the minorities to basically back Kamala Harris, which is the most unpopular vice president in like the history of the world. And they knew that all of you would vote blindly because your, your uh, orange man bad mentality would rule over it. And so uh, he's saying that it's not lawfare. It's evidence that what it's not, they're not engaging in lawfare because he has all these felonies and is still able to be on the ballot. Listen, dumbass. It's lawfare because he's the first American president to ever be formally charged with anything ever. We had terrible men as presidents for a long time. People that were like Andrew Jackson that was going against the central bank. People, uh, there were uh, people that shot, presidents shot people while they were in office in, in political disputes. Okay. There, there's been a whole, a whole host of things. Uh, Andrew Jackson literally went down and uh, kill, killed a bunch of Indians and stuff like, you know, basically committed genocide. And so, but, he, but yet Trump is the first president in history to ever leave, ever be formally charged with something. And I don't mean uh, an impeachment process. Bill Clinton was impeached, but he was never formally charged with anything in a courtroom. Okay. And so Trump was, and he's charged 91 times, 91 times is evidence of lawfare. Okay. And so, um, you said that the Supreme Court, you said you've recirculated the same objection a million times, and I've already dealt with this, but I'm going to have to have to touch on it again. You said that um, it still hasn't been ruled that he has absolute immunity yet. Yeah, of course it hasn't been ruled yet, because it saves the Supreme Court work, okay? Think about what I'm telling you. 
if you're a Supreme Court, you want to sorry, sorry, you can do you want to do as little work as possible. Okay. And so what you do is you'll just kick the decision down to a lower court, hoping that knowing what you would already rule, if it does come up to you, and then if the lower court rules the way you ruled, you literally don't have to do anything. They just did your job for you. And there's a non-zero chance that that actually will happen. And so the fact that they haven't ruled on it yet is actually just evidence that they're going through the same type of legal processes and trying to save themselves work. Now, they as a Supreme Court hold the ultimate right to uh, have the final say in it. And if a lower app appellate court makes the wrong decision and the wrong ruling, <clears throat> it's obviously going to get appealed by Trump. And then the Supreme Court can then accept it and set the ruling right. And um, that's a viable uh, path. And that's exactly how a lot of this stuff is done. Um, because why rule on anything if the app, uh, appellate court is just going to rule in your favor? It just, say, it just saves you a bunch of work. He said that Trump said he was going to terminate the Constitution. I'd like to see the quote, and I'd like to see it in the proper context. The quote hasn't been submitted. I think he went out for tea, so we're just, dis we're just going to dismiss that claim on that basis I'd until he actually gives the context of the quote. The Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should you should get the context of that quote and, and have it in, in its entirety, and then we can review that. Because I'm not aware, I'm not aware of that. And um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks like I answered everything. To recap, it's propagandist to say that Trump has more dementia than Biden. It's ridiculous to say that he was trying to subvert an election when he was trying to maintain the democratic process because there were shaky circumstances under which it was done. And um, you see, the last thing you said, which I don't really think needs an answer, but I will, I will do it in the sake of answering everything that you said directly. And in keeping with that, you basically said, you know, there's only a couple months before the election. If he just goes to jail, no one's going to care. You know, like they're just, they made this immunity ruling. And if he loses the election, you know, they, they, they won't exercise it. They're going to only, the, the kind of implication is that they would only exercise it if, you know, he did win or, or something like that. Then, then they would have to exercise it. I, I think that they know, uh, they know who they owe their support to, for, for getting a conservative Supreme Court. They know that they owe, um, they know that they lean towards Trump as a conservative ship, and I don't think they're going to, and it's in, in extremely bad taste to be the first time ever that they throw an American president and charge him and throw him in jail. I think just in terms of optics, um, and just informed of the fact that a lot of them were appointed by him, and a lot of them support him, that there's no way, even if he loses the objection, that they would have put that law in place and then never exercise it. So now that I've answered everything you said, uh, I hope you have a rebuttal. Wow. Uh, you, you thought that was rhetorical or something? Like rhetorically like advantageous to your position? So number one, you're dumbass. So to clear this up on the Trump stuff, you have a conservative Ted Cruz who's going to vote for Trump in this election who sucks Trump off. Look at the article in the main chat, dumbass. That's the article that says that uh, Ted Cruz was rebuking Trump on his comments to terminate the Constitution on Truth Social. That's from December of 2022. Second of all, in that rambling, almost like incoherent mess of a speech that you made in favor of Trump, uh, you said that 91 charges is evidence that it's lawfare. Nowhere did you support that. That's just your own political opinion. In fact, you cited that we had ex-presidents who did much worse things and, you know, they didn't, you know, get charged with anything formally in court. Well, let me tell you something, bud. It, it's the problem that you fail to understand is that it's not a question as to whether or not you personally find uh, the things that Trump has done, like, um, not as bad or not at, like, the same metric as, like, pre previous presidents, right? That's, like, your own, like, opinion on the fact. The fact of the matter is, there's no issue with things like Andrew Jackson going after the central bank in regards to, I mean, you have to be an idiot to basically say that this is on the magnitude of literally trying to subvert an election by like implementing slates and states that uh, basically voted against you, right? And so you're going to compare that to like trying to subvert the core foundations of this country that the founders laid out, you're retarded. Uh, the third part is you said something about Pence uh, trying to basically maintain the democratic relations to like prevent uh, you know, prevent the election from being certified because you and your contrived mind said there was an election fraud. First of all, you have no evidence, or at least in this conversation, you haven't provided any evidence, as you've done with your other claims, that there was an election fraud, right? I've told you several times, look at the, um, look at the plan that Trump had instituted weeks before January 6, weeks before they even certified, before the Electoral College decided to certify the results in December of that year. Look back at the scheme that he did in Georgia. Let's see what your response is to that. Oh, but he's trying to maintain democratic relations. Well, you're trying to basically downplay him questioning the election results uh, as like, okay, but he's just being skeptical. He's just try trying to like, you know, put into doubt uh, all the shady shit um, in the election, right? All the things that you claimed that were fraud. He didn't just do that. What he tried to do is try to basically blackmail a governor, blackmail all these jurisdictions, which by the way is illegal to do. It is a criminal act to do this, to basically enforce them to find him, uh, you know, X amount of ballot x amount of ballots out of thin air out of thin air so it rules in his favor so you were wrong about trump never saying they was terminating the constitution a conservative disagrees with you with that because he already rebuked him two years ago or nearly two years ago second of all you said something along the lines of well i mean this is just like more propaganda if anything it, you're the ones you're the anti-democratic ones by keeping him off the ballot hey dumbass whose fault is that whose fault is that that he had 91 charges presented against him more than any other uh former president in history right andrew jackson Andrew Jackson, and look, you're saying right now, I can provide you the quote from his Truth Social if you want. You're just going to get dunked on even further. Have you considered the fact that he just didn't question them? He also like pressed these people to like subvert the election in his favor? You didn't respond to that. 
And then you said something like, Trump can't have dementia or something because he, Biden is Obama 2.0. Okay, again, like, he didn't just say he was Obama once. He said it like 15 times. Trump didn't even know what the name of his running mate was when he picked him. He said, you know, this guy, J.P. Mandel. Who, who the fuck is J.P. Mandel, Shamos? Who is that, right? Is he referring to J.D. Vance? So he didn't know the name of his own running mate. And he intentionally misspoke in several rallies. It just keep He kept repeating the words J.P. Mandel, right? This is a guy who basically slurs his words, not just on a bad day. He slurs them frequently, and especially on X, when he had that interview with Elon Musk. So, I mean, you can continue calling me a propagandist. We could go through the different tweets that he's put out. We could go in. We could do back and forth and all this stuff. The point is, I've shown evidence that he has called for terminate the Constitution. A conservative Republican who's going to vote for him rebuked him on it. Well, third of all, Shamos, you were completely wrong about him. Like, you were basically wrong about Pence trying to restore democratic relations. What democratic relations? I'm a science man myself. What are the democratic I'm relations, cool. Shamos? And where is the evidence of no, election fraud? Biology, but yeah, okay, you're up. And MJ, you got noise in the background. And he does have dementia, by the way. He's completely wrong about that as well. Yeah, can we, do you guys want to move away from this uh, political topic and get back to the room? Please.